All right, guys, so uh, question from 6 4. Yeah, my first question can we just review when, like, the first, like, the x is squared at the front and the y squared at the end and in the middle? I feel like I get confused when the first term is squared and the last term is With an add in the middle? I feel like I should just talk to you. Guys, hey! Hey! Phone's away. Social time over. Math time now. Yes. I so, feel like I get confused when the first term is squared and the last term is squared, and then there's a the middle. Oh, so like, if I had some like, uh, exact, that's exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. What if I had this? You see how those are almost the same thing? Mm -hmm. Look at the coefficients. Coefficients are exactly the same. How do you factor this guy? What's it got to be? And the negative one and negative one. Yeah, it's got to be one and one, and they both have to be negative. So if I were to put a y and a y squared, like this problem is, all that does is makes you put a y. I wouldn't have to write the one, but I just didn't feel like erasing it. Does, does that make sense? I mean, yeah. that's all that happens. Why did you put an x and an x? Because there's an x squared. So, of course, at the end, what are you going to put? Y and a y. Yeah. So if I had another one that had more weird numbers like, uh, what you got, Jeff? Uh, sure. What I would do, here's what I would do. X, X, that's taken care of. Y, Y, that's taken care of. Now take care of the numbers. Does that make sense? Take care of the numbers now. That's, that's why I put the X and X down there. We've got, we take that care of. Is that, and then what numbers are going to work here? Nine and, two. 9 and 2. So those are coefficients of the y, so that you do get 18y squared. Which one's positive? The, two. the smaller one, I like 2. Don't do that to me, man. <laughs> I'm about to fall out of right, so not even halfway through the day. Yes? 2a, can you go over like... Oh, on the quiz. Oh, um, okay. So if I had a hammer, no, if I had so again, if I had something like this, everybody's two A would eventually look like this if you did it correctly. How do I solve this? Yeah, I definitely don't foil this stuff out. It's going backwards. Somebody already factored this for me. I'm like, thank you, person. So then I'd say either this is zero or that is zero. And again, it's all about does that make sense? 7x minus 5 is a number. It's multiplying by another number. What's the only way they could be zero is if one of those two numbers is zero. And then you solve. So. This problem would have started off like this. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. That's the way it would have started. That's 2a. Factor it. Set each factor equal to 0. Solve. Done. So the same thing you do with, um, with 2b. First thing on 2b you've got to do, everybody's got to do is get it equal to 0 factor, and then set each piece equal to zero. That's the idea. It's called a zero product property. So if two numbers multiplied by zero, then one of them's got to be zero. What's true if two numbers multiplied by eight? What's got to be true? Nothing. <laughs> the only thing that's got to be true then is they have to have the same sign. That's it. What could, does one of them have to be four? No. Right? could be eight times one. Oh, does one of them have to be less than eight? No. 16, I mean, do you see, so it's only zero that makes it known, that makes it very few things. In fact, the only thing there could be is one of them has to be zero. Maybe. So the, the most evil problem that you would see with this is this problem here. Let me see. Let me make one that works. Sorry. That's the most evil problem. 
Because then students that don't really understand what they're doing will say x minus 1 equals 16 or x plus 5 equals 16. What's that built off of? Why would either one of them have to be 16? Maybe that's 2 and that's 8. Maybe that's 2 and that's 8. Maybe that's 4 and they're both 4. Maybe that one is 32 and that one's 1 half. Maybe this one's negative 2 and this is negative 8. Holy shit. <laughs> so this sucks. This sucks. You have to go backwards a little bit to solve this one. What should be here? Zero. zero. What's it look like somebody did? It looks like somebody didn't get it equal to zero, but then they factored. So what do we got to do? We got to undo their stupid shit. We got to, oh, we got to multiply this shit back up. And that's where minus one plus five is plus four. Negative five equals, and then I got to subtract 16. Oh my God. And now I got it equal to zero. Now you factor. So it feels a little bit like you're going backwards. Yeah, you are. Somebody factored too early. Those assholes. Now, how do you factor this? Yeah, seven and three. Which one's positive? Seven. The bigger one. So an x is negative seven. X is three. How did I make this problem? I wrote those down. I picked x as three. So that's eight times two is 16. That's how I knew this was going to have a nice answer. I didn't know it was going to have this other answer. I just knew it was going to be nice. Anyway, just in case you're curious. <laughs> I didn't get lucky to put 16 and it happened to work. <laughs> no. Yes? Um, could you just kind of start the bonus? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, we kind of talked about that idea a little bit before. So just to make one that's everybody had that nobody had. Um, This is the bonus on there. Here's what I would do. No, yeah? What? Or, I mean, this is a problem like the bonus. It's not the bonus. There's a different no, I problem. See, I see. But you could do. Um, you guys see that? Big old parentheses, man. It's like a TIE fighter. All right. um, is that the difference of squares? Totally. I love it. What is this? The difference of two squares, right? So it, how does it work like any difference of squares would work? So I got two n plus twos. So put one there, one there. Oh, that should be n plus two. I got two b minus seven, so I put one there, one there, and then I put minus plus or plus minus, just make the middles. Now you could distribute, get your like terms together, right? You got to distribute the negative, blah blah, and get the numbers together. But that's just clean up. The first step was the idea. So difference of squares doesn't say you must have a square of a single letter. No, it doesn't say shit. It just says you have to have the difference of two things that are squares. That's it. That's what that is. So it's got to work the same way. It's a huge thing to realize about math. Is it might look different than you used to, but if it's got the same idea, it should work the same way. It has to, not just should. Okay. That was a bonus. So it's not the end of the world. You didn't quite get that. Um, yeah? Um, 6.5 minus 15. So, what I got was the 4x plus 3 and then 16 squared plus 12x plus 9. I like it. And then, but it's equal to 0. Yeah. So, I just don't know where to go from there. The big dude we can't handle at the moment. It's not mm -hmm. factorable, so we can't solve it yet. Yeah. You can you can set the little dude equal to 0 and get an answer, and then you're done. So, just this. Right. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, just to do an example problem like that. If I had this, then that's, how do I factor this? I almost just did it. plus 2. Right, this is x, x, x. This is 2, 2, 2. So x plus 2. Yeah, so plus a 2. The other 2x is there. Minus 2. Good, minus 2x. 2x. Plus 4. Plus 4, all right. 
So x plus 2 is 0, so you get an answer. And then this is 0, I can't factor this. We don't know quadratic formula yet officially, so you can't do it. So this is your only answer. But you know how many answers there should be. Two more, so three total, because it's Q. The two other answers are going to be not real, which is an unfortunate name. It doesn't mean they're like, it's just the name. In fact, when they first came up with negative numbers, people said those are imaginary, those don't exist. How can you have negative apples? What is that? That's what people said. And hopefully everybody in here is like, I know all too well what negative is. Look at my bank account sometimes. <laughs> Look at the temperature. It's negative sometimes in other parts of the country. San Diego, you don't even know it gets in the 20s. You're like, that doesn't exist. What are you talking about? That's a measure of temperature. So for right now, we just... For right now, we stop at the only piece we can do. We can't factor this, so we can't solve this part. If you know quadratic formula, you do it. I'm not going to take points off, but officially, we don't know it yet. No. Yes. <laughs> oh, all right. This is a perfect example of something that's like that, but a little bit different. Um, so help me out. If I had x to the ninth minus y to the ninth, for example, I know that's not what it says. How would I factor that? What form is that in? What could it be in? How many terms are there? Two. Two. So what could it be? Squares or cubes? Which one is it? Why cubes? Because it'd be cut in thirds. I like it. So you put a little dude, big dude. Cut it in thirds for me. What do you get? You guys with me? I mean, identify what it is and then do it. So the categorization of it is an important step. Because then you can go, I don't have to remember anything except cubes right now. That's all i got to remember. So x9 is x cubed, x cubed, x cubed. Why not? Y cubed, y cubed, y cubed. So then I put one of each. Then what goes here? Yeah, the other two x cubes would make x6. So the other two y cubes go over here. And of course, the middle term is going to be x1 plus x cubed, y cubed. So for your problem, six. Six. Yeah. I don't know why, but I can't even pretend like I. No, yeah, it's a six. I don't write that bad. Uh, it's getting close. Um, you, the problem you have has. Yeah, but still. Now watch. So watch, watch, watch. So right here, if I would have put nine a and nine b, cut that in thirds. What do you get? 3A, 3A, okay, so that would be a 3A, that would be a 3B, do you see that? That would be 6A, and that would be a 3A, B, B, oof, check it, what's X to the 3A times X to the 6A? X to the 9A, Boop. so as long as you can cut the exponent in thirds, it's doable. So, for example, if I had like uh, y to the 4ab minus z to the, uh, what do you got, gotcha? 8cd, uh, what form is that in? Squares, because you can cut everything in half. What would this be? y to the 2ab plus minus z to the 4cd. What's y to the 2ab times y to the 2ab? It's 2ab plus 2ab is 4ab. So they throw some letters in there. Who gives a shit? What's the process say? If you can cut in thirds, cubes. Do it. Cut in thirds. Cut in half. Squares. Do it. Cut in half. And you guys are like, nope. <laughs> Changes everything when you put it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. The process doesn't say. If it's a number, then you know it doesn't say that at all. It doesn't say that at all. It's just like rules of exponents. When do you add the powers? And the bases are the same. Do the powers have to be numbers? No. 
right? That's really what this is based on. And there, you add the powers because the bases are the same. So that's how you get four in. Here. I'm not trying to make you feel bad if it doesn't make sense. I'm just trying to show you it should make sense. It's just that your brain doesn't like the way it looks. You're used to numbers there. They put letters there. You're like, oh my god, what happens? Nothing. It's the same. Same thing. So for number 45 in that section, it's, um, you see it? With the Y and Z. Yep. So you would, would you break up the Y and the Z separately? Nope. How do you mean? What section of the Oh, this is still 6-5. There's a problem that looks like, what was it, X12? Um. So which, what is this? Is it squares or cubes? Cubes. Yeah, if that wasn't there, it could actually be either one. Because you can cut 12 in half and you can cut it in thirds. But that there has got to be cubes. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's X12? Break it in thirds. X4, X4, X4. What's Y cube Z12? YZ to the fourth times YZ to the fourth times YZ to the fourth. The reason I do that, you have to have them still together. I have people that do like X minus Y, X to the fourth minus Y plus Z. Where, what, what, what? Makes no sense. Aren't they together? They are together. They gotta stay together. You can't just insert an operation you want to in the middle of them. That doesn't make any sense. They are together. So when you write this little dude, big dude, you're gonna put one x to the fourth minus one yz to the fourth. Yz's are together. So forth. So we know the worst code. I think he's drawn on the whiteboard like he. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I was just messing around. <laughs> Sorry. Yes? So what would you do if, if the Y cube was there? Ooh, I like it. Alright, so in general, let's do a, a little bit easier one to look at besides 12 power, okay? Because uh, that's a freaky kind of thing. So the simplest one to look at is X to the sixth. This is a good question, because that is both squares and cubes, so which way do you look at it? Well, let's try to do both and see which way I can go the furthest with. Because when I try to factor something, I try to factor it as completely as I can, right? So if I look at it as a squares first, how does this work? Yeah. Then what's each of these? What's, each, what's that? What's that? They're each what? What is this? What is this? Can you do something with this? It, no, no, come on. No, no, no. What form is it in? Cubes. Cubes. You can break him up, little dude, big dude. And you can break this one up, little dude, big dude. Right? Just because it's a part of something that came from some bigger thing doesn't mean that it, that little part can't go further. How do you factor 18 all the way? 2 times 9. Can't 9 go further? Yeah, but I've already... No, screw it. 2 comes down. 9 is 3 times 3. I mean, that's... So can't you go further with him? Yes. Can't you go further with him? Yes. So then you do it. And just to cut to the chase, this would be x minus y, x squared plus xy plus y squared, x plus y, x squared minus xy plus y squared. Wow. That's pretty far. Let's see how far we get if you look at this as cubes to begin with. This is kind of cool. Remember, it was both a square and a cube. And look, squares led to cubes. Now here, this is just a funky little side thing about math. If I look at it as cubes first, let me do this in a different color. Yeah, that's going to help, Jeff. All right. If I do this as cubes first, what do I have to do? I have to break it in thirds. So what do I get? Yeah, x squared, x squared, x squared. y squared, y squared, y squared. This will be... Good. This 
this is, you can go further, and you're going to get x plus y, x minus y, aren't you? But this you cannot go further with. That is so weird. Or at least you can't see how to. But it actually comes out to be that. So that's not something you would immediately think. That is so freaking metallic. So which way should you handle it if it's both the cubes and the squares? You treat it as the squares first. And then the cubes part comes out. If you treat it as the cubes first, you're screwed. So that would be wrong. If you just treat it as the Yeah, it would officially be wrong because you haven't taken it as far as you could have. So I'm just telling you, if you have something that could be both squares and cubes, what do you do first to it? Squares. You treat it as the squares first. Which to me, kind of makes sense because squares is easier. You're making all the numbers smaller. I think you'd want to do that anyway to start with. So that is the way you should do it, because that's the way that lets you go further. Now, if I sat here and I made you multiply these two out, you would get this. But is that obvious? Hell no. It's not obvious. All right, enough of that. I can't even remember if I assigned one of those to you guys. Okay, anything else from homework stuff? And 7 2, a real quick problem from 7 2. I got a little hand I'm going to give you that's everything we've done so far in chapter 7, including the next section we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, 7.2 says something like this. How to divide fractional looking dudes. Flip the second dude. So let's try to do this. And then what am I going to do right after that? Let's see if we can do both at once. Let's see if we can do that. How do I factor the top of this guy? Yes, it has to be. That has to be. Holy crap, what was that? That was puberty number seven. Oh, I got out of the growth spurt. Uh, that, that has to be easy. Has to be right now easy. All right. And then the bottom here should be almost equally easy. When you see these two problems at this point, you should be like, oh, good, it's just those. How do I work the bottom out? Yeah, it's xx. Now I just got to worry about the numbers. Negative 5. Negative 3. Negative 3. I like it. <laughs> times, I'm going to flip this. Let's see if we can handle this. So that's going to end up on the top. How do I factor that? Yes, another easy one. And how do I factor this? Now, this is hard for some people because you forget. What are you always supposed to try first? Yes, and what comes out of these? X. Yeah, is everybody cool with the fact that we flipped that guy, right? So I can make a multiplication. And now you just do what? Go to town. You know, die, die. What else does? Die, die, you. Die, die. So what are we left with? Shwoo. Now let me see if I can, well, I was going to say let me see if I can push this a little further. And I always do, so not just this chair. What if x is... That's done, right? What if x was, uh, let's make it not too crazy. What if x is 2? 
What do I have here? 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Is that cool? Why did I pick 2? Just because. <laughs> I can pick anything except what? 5, 3, and then to be honest, or, or negative 3 or 0 or negative 5 because of this flips and everything. It's horrible. So a 2 is safe. It wasn't any of that shit. Right. That's, but besides those things, I can pick anything. So I just picked two. Um, so what is this if x is two? Four minus sixteen is four minus sixteen. Negative twelve. Negative twelve plus fifteen. Three. What's four plus twelve? Sixteen. Sixteen. And what's four minus twenty-five? Negative twenty-one. Oops, and this is divided by, sorry. Whew. So yeah, so then we flip it, and then I can reduce these, can't I? And what, I get negative 35 over 16? What did I do wrong? Something I did wrong. 4 minus 9, negative 5. 4 minus 16, so negative 12 plus 15 is 3. It was the 3x. Oh, so let me see. 4 plus 6. Oh, there you go. Should be a 10. Thank you. There you go, Jeff. There you go, buddy. <laughs> and then what happens here? I forgot my negative. So negatives cancel. 5 goes into 10. So I get 7 and a half. It's okay. Thank you. Is that all right? So I see what I did. I put a 4 there instead of a 2. Uh, and look over here. Aren't these supposed to equal each other? Isn't that what this work means? This is this. And if x is 2, what do I get? 7 over 2. So again, just like I showed you an example like that with factoring. So when you are simplifying these things, you are actually simplifying an infinite number of fraction problems. So relative to that, that's damn easy. If I said you're going to factor, you're going to you're going to solve, simplify an infinite number of fractions today. You're like, why did I come? Here? <laughs> well, we just did. We just did, right? This is a really cool way to check it as long as you're, you know, doing things right. And maybe, maybe, maybe. So that is what this means. Everything that can be represented like this for any value of x that works reduces to this kind of thing, whatever x is. And there's an example, there's a concrete example. So if you pick x equals 7, it worked the same way. If you pick x equal to negative 6, it worked the same way. As long as it doesn't make somebody undefined. It's all fun and games until somebody's undefined. Okay. All right, so that's an example from 7-2. Now we're getting into... That's multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And all rational expressions are, are fractions with letters in them. Right? Polynomial fractions, another way to say that. So now we're going to do stuff like this. Um, what's your gut tell you this should be? And just to remind you, what, what's this? What's 7 11s plus 2 11s? 9 11s. What's a 7 15s plus 2 15s? 9 15s. So what's 7 x plus 1 plus 2 x plus 1? 9. 9 x plus 1s. Right? The bottom doesn't change. We know this. It's just that the minute we put variables in there, you're like, something's got to be different now. There ain't a damn thing that can be different. Because what are variables? Numbers. So however numbers work, variables have to work that way too. They don't look the same. They don't feel the same because we can't see what they are. They're unknown shit. But how does the process work? The same. It has to be. So, so, okay, here's the next level of this. We're not getting to unlike denominators yet. That's an exciting thing. We'll do it later. Uh, let's see. What if I had this here? You could do it, buddy.
to one level, this is kind of like, well, okay, yeah. But, but what do we have to do with the last step, with any fraction problem, it's the last step. Check to see if it, you might, help me out. What's three, uh, ele uh, uh, do it, do, just pick a better number, Jim. What's three uh, 25ths plus two 25ths? Five twenty-fifths. If you circle that, you're wrong. Why? Reduce it. Reduce it. Oh, shit. Okay. So, what's the last thing you do in any fraction problem? You check to see if it can reduce. Reduce. Sorry. Right. Like, so what? What's the first step on this? Do I have a like denominator? Yes. Yes. So it should be easy as shit. Just put them both together. So it's two x squared minus fifty. But if you stop there, you're wrong. Because what can you do with the top? Take out a two. What do you have left? X squared minus? That's where you got to reinforce your, your brain. Your brain, stop, stop brain. Right? you got to tell yourself over and over because you're not used to this. You can't break into a subtraction problem, right? What do I, I still have to continue factoring, right? How do I factor that top? And of course then, die. Yeah. So I get 2 times X plus 5. Bam! Or if you put two x plus ten, that's fine too. Normally, you don't re-multiply stuff at the end of these problems. So you keep it all factored so you can see that nothing else cancels. But if you made two x plus ten, how do you guys feel about that? We're gonna find out because here's some problems for you to try.